Welcome once again to Product One's technical web series. Uh, today we are touching on Creo Simulate. Uh, this is a continuation from last week from Creo Simulate Lite, which is available on the base package. However, the one that I'm going to show you now is the one that you get when you purchase Creo Simulate. This is the one that's integrated with Creo Parametric, which is our modeling package. So this is what we have uh, at this stage. Uh, let's say for an example, I'm having a chair. I know very well that I'm going to exert a load just like this. And this is the part that's going to be subjected to that load. That will mean that the backrest will fall off if that part is actually gone. So this is a part in question. So this is what I'm faced with. Number one, I know very well that I'm having the following. I need to have bolts that are fastening this product here. What's also quite intriguing is that if I look at this chair, if I exit a load from the back, I can have movement slightly in those directions. However, I'm going to have limited or no movement in that region. That simply means that in here, there's going to be a rotation and translation. And here, I will have rotation, but I wouldn't have translation. So this, is actually going to be a pin. This is going to be a cylinder connection. We'll get to that in a second. So let's go back to this component here. The first thing that you do, you go into simulate. Remember, if you don't have the license for Creo Simulate, it will take you to the simulate line. If you haven't seen the video from last week, please check that out. So because I do have simulate now, the first thing that I'm going to do is assign material. There's a wide range of materials that I can actually pick from. I've got composites, I've got ferrous metals, and so forth. So these are some of the materials that you actually have in terms of composites. These are some of the materials you have for plastic. However, for this demonstration, I'm just going to stick with aluminium, which is under the legacy material. And of course, I can look at the properties of that material. I can change the Poisson's ratio and so forth. All right. So. Now that I've actually applied this material, I can actually mesh my model. That means that I can actually break this geometry into small little fragments called elements. I don't need to, of course, but this is just to demonstrate the capabilities inside Creo Parametric and Creo Simulate. So what I have here is my mesh. As you can see, I've got different size elements in certain areas. I can, of course, control my mesh to say this entire component Let's make maybe the elements to be 10 millimeters, all right? If I now mesh this, I'm going to have my mesh that has a specific size. Of course, I can segregate and also pick regions or areas that I want to be even more finer than this. What I also like showing in this case is the following. I can also configure how I view this mesh. I can say I don't want to see the mesh points. This is what I have. And I can also say, in this case, how about we look at maybe shrinking the mesh to be that size so that when I explode or mesh this, you'll see there's a, now a little bit of an exaggerated gap between my elements. This gives you a rough overview in terms of those tetrahedral elements that actually exist in this case. Like I said, it's not necessary for me to do this. I'm just doing just to showcase uh, the capabilities of simulate. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is assign what you call constraints. So like I said before, I'm going to apply what you call a pin connection here. So that will mean that I want rotation, but I want to restrict the translation. So that's basically what I have there. And then on this area here, I want to free up the translation as well. So this is what I have at this stage. So quite interestingly enough, I know that the load is actually applied on those surfaces. And let's say in the Z field, if you can look here at the bottom, it actually shows the orientation of my force. Let's say it's actually going to be like this or even like that. So what I'm going to do here is, if I say make this to be 350, that's not the true representation of what's happening. In fact, one might even argue that the direction of the slope is actually that way. But that's not the true reflection of this because it will look like the force is directly on the bolts, but it's actually applied away from that point. So 
In this case, we're going to use what you call total loaded point. Uh, this is what we're looking for. So this is it. So it generates like a bending moment in this area. So that means that I'm having something along those lines. And you would agree that this is exactly what actually happens because of I'm actually applying the load here. The load on the bolts is actually going to rotate in this particular area. So now that we've actually done with this, we can start our basic structural analysis. So what I'm going to do is start my analysis. I can call it whatever here. In this case, let's call it basic. And this is what I have. Now I'm going to run this analysis and look at those results and probably maybe I can do something extra from this. Okay. So what's also all significant to mention is while the analysis is actually running, I can look at what's happening to my analysis and it will tell me when it's actually done. I can also configure what you call templates for my result window so that every time I view my results, they come in a particular format. Okay, so these are my results. I can actually see my vector plot. I can obviously see the animated fringe plot, which I can actually con control and clip it and so forth. If you want to see a little bit of that, you can check the video that we've done uh, last week. That is it from this week. Um, if uh, you like to have more information and so forth, please don't uh, shy away from contacting us and please don't forget to like the video and leave the comments as well. Until next time, thank you very much.